How about I go? How about I go there? How about I go there? How about I go where? How about I go here? How about I go here? How about now? How about I go? Home foreclosures. Welcome back. Now, sooner or later, investors will discover foreclosure. Everybody discovers it sooner or later. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, it doesn't matter what the economy is, whether it's going up and doing very well or it's on the backside coming down and there are a lot of depressed things going on and the market's going to hell. When all that happens, folks, there's going to be a ton of foreclosures. So in both cases, there's going to be a big market for real estate foreclosure. There always has been. So we need to learn a little bit about it. So today I'm going to talk about what happens in a foreclosure and how the newcomers become so confused with the tax default the business. Now, tax default the property, you're going to be able to buy for back taxes, 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. Foreclosures, the bank is foreclosing on a loan. So the auction is going to start at whatever the bank loan is. So if there's $100,000 owed on that loan, that's where the auction is going to start. That's a world of difference between 10 and 20 cents on the dollar. So to get started, the lenders, whether it's a private lender, a bank or an institution, they all lend money on real estate. Now, the newcomers need financing on their real estate. Also, the people want to refinance it. So this is a big business. A lot of lenders make their money on loaning on real estate. Problem is, if the market turns, some people can't make the payments. All right, so when a borrower needs money, they go to the bank to get it. The bank is more than happy to lend the money. However, the bank is going to want some security. Now, what is the bank doing? They're doing nothing more than giving the, the person that wants to borrow, they're giving them a promissory note. Now, you're going to call that a mortgage or a deed of trust, but there's a promissory note within that those documents that says they will pay. So in the world of commerce, the promissory note is, wo is woven right into a mortgage or a deed of trust. So let's keep it real simple. Just understand that when you sign a mortgage, you owe that money to the bank. All right, now, the bank, they want collateral. They want to make sure, what happens if you don't pay? What happens if you walk away? What happens if you pass away? The bank wants collateral. So the collateral is going to be the property. It could be a farm, could be a home, could be an office building. They want collateral. So if they don't get paid, they can foreclose and take the collateral and resell it so that they can get paid on their loan. So the bank only wants payment on their loan. So it doesn't matter what late night television says or the internet says about the bankers being bad dudes. They're not bad dudes. They lent the money. People said they were going to pay back. Now they can't pay, pay back. Well, if they can't pay back, the bank is going to go broke if they don't get paid. So they're going to have to get the collateral back. Now, how are they going to do that? Well, if the people have, dis have disappeared or passed away, they're going to have to go through a legal process. That's nothing more than a foreclosure. That simply means they're going to file a lawsuit and they're going to file a lawsuit in the courts and they're going to use an attorney, which is now called a plaintiff. And that plaintiff is going to sue the homeowner, which is a defendant. And that's a lawsuit that has to go to court and the judge has to hear it. And there has to be a hearing before the bank can get their property back. So foreclosure is going to take time. They have to give all the appropriate notices. They have to get in the courtroom. They have to have a judge. It could take six months, nine months. Some attorneys drag it out for two years. So when a bank lends money or a private lender lends money on a mortgage, they have a long period of time before they can collect their money. Now, in a deed of trust, which they use in the West and they use in the Southern parts of the United States, it's a process a little quicker. But in both cases, the collateral for the loan is the property, whether it's a farm, an office building or a home, whatever it might be. Now, all the bank wants is their money back. They're not selling property for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar unless the bank has gone broke. And the bank will go broke if they don't foreclose and get the property. So the point is, the bank is securing their loan with collateral. The collateral is the property, all right? But the bank wants payment for the loan. So in today's episode, I'm talking about foreclosures, all right? Now, the document usually that's used is a mortgage, but it could be a deed of trust in the West or in the Southern part of the United States. Okay, now lenders are always concerned about foreclosures, but so are the people that own the property. All right, so if the late payments start adding up, too many late payments, I can tell you the lender is gonna be concerned 
and they're going to give notice, and they'll give a notice of default. And if you give a notice of default, that's going to start a legal process, all right? So once that legal process starts, and if you don't pay the, pay the payments and pay them on time, then they'll do a legal process that accelerates the loan. In other words, they'll say, all right, you didn't make your regular payments, you owe us all the money, and they'll do a, what's called a foreclosure. Remember, the bank is always concerned, just as much as you would be if you owned the property, they want to get their collateral back so they can sell it and get paid and put the money back in the bank. All right, so they hire a law firm to do all that. They're not bad people. The attorneys just make money uh, collecting for people that don't make their payments. Simple problem. All right, so everybody becomes an adversary. A lot of bad words going back and forth. The problem is the bank wants their collateral. The people that have the property don't want to give it up. All right, so it means the lender is foreclosing. So I'm sure you got it. All right, so now let's think about comparing that with tax defaulted property. There's going to be a lot of difference. You're not going to have to worry about court systems. You're not going to have to worry about lawsuits. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to buy directly from the county. Is that going to be pretty good? Yes. Now, in a foreclosure situation, you might have a $200,000 property, but only $100,000 is loaned. So the bank is going to start a foreclosure, and then when they start that, they might end up with that property that's worth $200,000, but there's only $100,000 owed on the property. So that's what they're talking about on television. They're talking about that all the time. Uh, people are talking about that on the internet. If you can buy one of those properties before it went to foreclosure, you're getting the idea. All right, so we're really in the tax defaulted business. We're going to buy it directly from the county government. There's 3,000 plus counties. There's going to be over 5,000 tax defaulted auctions every year in those counties. So thousands of foreclosures are recorded in those counties. But when they're doing foreclosures from a bank, they're trying to get their money for a loan. So the loan could be hundreds of thousands. Whereas tax defaulted property, where are they going to be? They're going to be 10 and 20 cents on the dollar. All right. Now, are all these properties sold for 10 and 20 cents? No, not actually they're not. Some of them will sell for a little bit more than that. But if it starts at 10 or 20 cents, that's a nice place to start. I don't know where the property is actually going to sell for, but I know if I can start at 10 or 20 cents on the dollar, I'm going to do a lot better. All right. When you buy a tax to file a property, there's no mortgage and there's no deed of trust loan on that property. So think about this. If you could buy a property for 10 or 20 cents on the dollar, could you then resell it for 50 or 60 cents and be happy? So you bought it at 10 or 20, sold it at 50 or 60 cents. You've got a nice margin there. Who would you sell it to? How about all those guys and gals that do fixers? How about the people that do renovations, take a mediocre house and make it into a mansion? How about all those flippers? How about people that need payments? You know, a lot of people that you could sell to. So the key is buy them at the tax defaulted auction and then let's do something about getting them sold. So how would you sell them? Well, you could sell them using Craigslist. You could use eBay. You could Zillow, Trulia. You could sell them online. How about using Facebook Marketplace? So if you could buy for 20 cents on the dollar and sell for 50 or 60 cents on the dollar, could you sell it quickly? How many of those would you want to do? You'd want to do as many as you possibly could. That would work for you. And would you be happy? You would make money and the county would be happy because they sold the property to you and now they could pay the county bills. So it works for everybody. You see those little white circles? That's how many auctions are taking place within that state in the next 90 days. This calendar updates every single day. I'm here today to show you how to make money. To do that, I'm going to show you briefly that there are thousands of tax defaulted real estate properties across the 3,000 plus counties in the United States. This is quite interesting. You're looking at the Ted Thomas Magic Interactive Map and Auction Calendar. It changes every day. Now, I created the calendar and the map so I would know how many auctions are taking place every day in the United States. Now I can show the little guy how to make money. Most importantly, I created this system so I could have an auction list for each auction 24-7. Folks, in the small population counties, you'll find they have dozens of properties to sell at tax auctions. All right, now, that's in the small county. Now, the counties that have big populations, those populations mean that there's going to be a lot of tax auctions. So that means there's going to be hundreds. I've been to auctions where there's thousands of tax defaulted properties. Now think about that. Thousands of properties that they're going to sell with starting bids of 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. 
Are you going to make a deal at every single auction? I don't think so, but there's going to be a lot of them, so you're going to have a good chance of making yourself a bundle of dough. All right, now with the right, right guidance, like a coach or a person to help you, this can turn into a lifestyle business where you can be making a multiple of six figures every year. This works, and it's worked for decades. So I've developed and I've tested a proven step-by-step -step system, and that's exactly what we teach you. Now, this has all been perfected when there was big money on the line, because we're looking to buy these properties all the time. I'm an investor. I'm not a broker. I'm not an attorney. I'm an author and a publisher, and I'm always looking for properties just like you are. So we teach and practice buy it low and sell it low. Why do we do that? Because we want to sell them quickly and not have to hold on to them. We know who we're going to sell them to, to the fixers, to the renovators, to the flippers, or we're going to try and finance the properties for someone else. Okay, what are we talking about? We're talking about tax defaulted property. So let's get back to an actual example. So in a local county, in a small population county, one of my student investors found a property that was not in pristine condition. It was used and abused like most tax defaulted properties. All right, he only invested $9,100. All right, that wasn't a big investment. All right, he bought the property after he had looked at it. Now, prior to buying, he went out and looked around and he found out that there was other properties that had much higher assessed values on them. So what he was buying was used and abused, which is like many of these properties, trees were overgrowing it and whatever. So this was not a pristine property. However, it was already tax assessed at 91,000. He paid 9,100. The property was worth 91,000. That's a good deal. But as I said, he went out and he looked around in the neighborhoods. He found out there was properties valued as much as 150,000. So what did he do with the property? He did just exactly what I suggest. Get it sold. So who did he sell it to? He sold it to a tenant, handyman guy. The guy put $5,000 down and agreed to make payments. Okay, folks, this is just one deal. Would one deal that you spent $9,000 for that was worth $150 change your life a little bit? It would probably change it a lot. This is happening in over 3,000 counties every single day. All right, now there's a lot more of these I'd like to tell you about, but I'm going to run out of time. What you just looked at was just a teeny tiny amount of the business that's out there and available. People make money on this all the time. Folks, if you could buy for 10 cents on the dollar, like he did, and then resell it, how many would you want to do? These properties at tax default at auction, there's no mortgage, there's no deed of trust. Once you get the deed to the property, you can sell it. Now, I do a lot of questions and answers on YouTube. So as I button it up, I want to tell you, each day I answer questions on YouTube. The question that I'm asked the most is, where do I find properties? Where are the local markets? Where are the county? Where do I find them? So what I did to solve that problem for you is I created an interactive map and an auction calendar. All right, all you have to do with this interactive map and auction calendar is move your mouse over the state. And when you do, it will tell you how many auctions are in that state in the next 60 to 90 days. All right, now if you click the mouse, what's going to happen then is it will take you to an auction, take you to a, a county where you can actually see an auction list. Now I'm out of time. Two quick things before I go. Number one, if you're going to buy at an auction, you want to be cautious. You want to go and look at the property before you buy. It could have burned down. There could have been a hurricane. There could have been a flood. There could be. It could be next to a pig farm or chicken farm. Think about all those things. A lot of people don't want to buy those properties that they damage like that. So always look at it. Secondly. You want to have an exit strategy. And like my friend, what he just did is he had a property that was worth way more than they were selling it for. And he knew that because when he went, he went and looked at the property and he planned his exit strategy. He sold it and he got payments. All right, I'm Ted Thomas. I'll see you on the next video. Don't forget, request your free auction list right below me.